you open your mouth, you've really said so much. And that's just a truth that we all have to fundamentally understand. I do understand that profiling and things like that happen. However, before profiling, clothing is a language. And that's something that we just have to fundamentally understand. Uh, but my inception in the hip hop, I'm a Morehouse grad. I majored in biology, worked in a genetics lab. I moved to New York City because I, you make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. And what happened with me is walking around at that time, it was, you know, it was a mini disc. Walking around with my mini disc player, it bothered me the frowns that I would get when I was listening to hip hop. You know, because I worked on, I was working at the Ralph Lawrence store on the Upper East Side. So I'm living on the Upper East Side, and it bothered me the way people looked at me and judged me just because of what they could hear coming out of my headphones. And so I had this revelation uh, one, one morning. I said, you know what? Uh, I got to go. I want to bring class to hip hop. I was like, because the, the thing about hip hop, and one of the things I don't think hip hop is really respected in the fact that hip hop is a new genre of music created just like R&B, jazz, classical, and it should be respected as an art form just like that. And it really wasn't, and I was like, I felt that if it had a little more class, then it would get a different eye, it would get a, a different look, it would get a, a, a whole nother um, type of, a, a different audience, I felt. And so my goal was to work with any of the bigger voices. So I literally, I like strategically strategize, I'm gonna get at, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna work for Jay, uh, Dame, Russell, Sean Combs, I'm gonna work for one of them, because those were the bigger voices at the time, and um, you know, I had been working in fashion for about three and a half years, and unbeknownst to me, I began to brand myself, you know, in in Manhattan because as big as New York is, or any town for that matter, you know, it's very small when you start to think about people coming together in events. And so, what ended up happening is, you know, the, the interesting thing about your brand is your brand is not just what you say about yourself. Ultimately, it's what others say about you. And so, I didn't really know I was branding myself, but I was, and so. Um, I ended up, you know, I, I was like, you know, I'm always, I talk about first impressions all of the time. You know, I talked about it on, you know, G's to Gents. I talked about it in, in the book. And so I knew my first impression with Sean's Combs had to be different. If I walk up, how you doing? My name is. I would love to work in the, I mean, he hears that 40 times a day. So I knew that I had to have a different tactic. So I literally walked up to him and said, he, he had just started Sean John. Now, Sean John started as jeans, t-shirt, and velours. People who remember that, that clothing line started. That, that was it. Yeah, and so, and so I walked up to him, and I walked up to him. He was at some event, and I walked up to him, and I pointed at my gear at the time, and I said, you, you want to do this, but you can't do this, and then walked up. Well, obviously, his ego can't take that. No, no, we, we know that, you know, we, whether we know him or not. And so it, it be, kind of became a little bit of a cat and mouse. And so he ended up walking to this restaurant and we exchanged information. And so uh, I ended up uh, working as his assistant. The first, I'll never forget, we, we took our first flight and uh, I flew every single suit that he owned to LA. And I remember, you know, first of all, people that are rich are real cheap. That's first of all, and that's why they're rich. <laughs> so, you know, I remember him walking, I had a $5,000 FedEx bill, and he walks out flipping. Why is it, who the heck has this $5,000? I was like, oh, that's mine. I'm new. He's like, who are you? You just got here. What you think? I was like, no, I flew all of your suits here, and I want you to see I'm throwing away 90% of them. I'm keeping these three. I want to show you why, but we're going to have them retailored, and I have my tailor here. So you're the chairman of the board. So I'm calling you the chairman. I'm not calling you Puff Dad anymore. And it was a shift for him. Now, mind you, I started working with Sean Combs two months after the trial, the J-Lo, and all the shine, all of that. So I'm two months after that. So his, in the media, his perception was entourage, you know, the, all, we, we know all of the trial and all that stuff. So when I started, when I changed his sense of style, and the first thing he did, I said, you know, I was like, you need to go on, you know, Letterman Lynn on one of them. And you need to show people the new you. I said, because you still have the same, people have the same, you know, impression about you. And so I said, as soon as you sit down with Jay Leno, cross your legs. Because I'll never forget when I first was working with Sean and I crossed my legs. And then he'd be like, yo, Negro, you ain't hanging out with that. What you doing? What's, what, what's wrong with you? Because, you know, I sit with my legs and I'm like, well, what are you talking about? So you, know, you ain't trying to sit off fly like that. And I'm like, this is how I sit. 
But you gotta understand, Sean Combs came from Howard University and left, and you know he came straight into hip hop, and so he hasn't, he didn't, he didn't really. That's not a dig. At, stay focused. Stay focused. This is not a dig at Howard. My point is, Sean didn't know his father. His father died at two and a half. Okay, so by the time he got into hip hop, the, his only mentors were the people that were in hip hop. So there was no male figure around him where he could see, well, you know, a man sits like that. So he didn't really know. So it was an interesting, you know, kind of paradigm where it was a bi mentorship going on here. You know, I always say Sean Combs was my first G's to Jens. You know, and so by changing his sense of style and then, you know, that's in the, it, it started to change things and then Jay saw it and then Jay said, okay, we're doing button ups and he put it in the lyric and then that started to change things and so then folks start to get dressed up and I started to feel much better and then I was like, okay, now, now people are starting to get it. People are going to the Grammys and people are, you know, putting on tuxedos and these things and so I was like, okay, now let's go deeper and that's why I wanted to write the etiquette book was because, you know, like everybody really here has said and Modi's been very eloquently pointing is, one of the biggest issues is there hasn't been a lot of learn than teach in hip hop. You know, the, the, the first generation, they did their thing, but a lot of it just because it may have been access, and people figuring out, but they didn't get a lot of opportunity to teach somebody. You know, somebody went and got Fruit of Loops and they producing and making beats the best that they can with whatever sounds that they can do, but they didn't understand that hip hop is not just a beat and lyrics. It's, you gotta have dance, you gotta have a DJ, you gotta have, it's, it's all of those, it's the fashion, all of those aspects is what makes it hip hop. It's a culture. And so, you know, that was, you know, that was a singular, uh, and a very strategic goal, you know, th that I had and I started to, you know, to see change. And, you know, for me, it, 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 what happens is the biggest problem I think that we're having is we have, it's, it's, when you specifically talk about the men, we just have, a, a, people have, a, a, there's an identity crisis that's going on in our men. And so people don't understand what a man is. And there was a study about these elephants and this elephant was here and this elephant didn't grow, this, these you know, kid elephants didn't grow up with their father and they were very aggressive and they were angry and they fall all the time. And then these that had the mother and the father, they were very docile. And so this whole idea of what a man is, it's been turned upside down and if somebody comes up to you and he's talking to you extra animated and with bass in his chest if you don't give that back to him then you know you are soft and you are less than but I mean the perspective I come from is you know all anger comes from fear and so I, you got to sit and look behind that veil and see this somebody who, who there's a lack of love right here and somebody's missing something and so it's like, okay, let's go deeper here. And you know, for me, you know, I, I think that you know, you know, I, we've now taken the book and created a curriculum, and we piloted at Spelman College in Mississippi Valley State. Mississippi Valley State, thank you. Um, they, you know, they get you know the, primarily the students from the Mississippi Delta, which is the poorest community in America. And so I've seen it do great strides because my thing is, if you can be comfortable in all social situations then that's powerful, that you are now limitless. You can now get out of your corner. You can know, you know, I can, I've seen the kid whose mom is on crack who doesn't know his father who has learned etiquette and now has the confidence to go to the finest restaurant and order tea. You can do that, you can find a dollar to order some tea. <laughs> and every time you do that, you're then gonna find somebody who's going to, you know, you already having a conversation with everybody in the room just by your etiquette because they're looking at you and that's what I used when I first moved to New York and you know they nobody had no money but you know there was a you know a new actor nobody knew and he didn't have no money Terrence Howard and my good friend was a jewelry designer Jessica and we would go to the finest restaurants in New York City and order two appetizers and put our money together and we put on our best and we dress and every single time all of these different business people from different genres would come up and introduce themselves and even if I just was able to ask a question you know, an answer to a question can change the trajectory of my life. And so that's why I'm so passionate about it. It, it starts off with just an image thing, but it's really much deeper than that. It's really about, you know, getting all of the tools so that you can really live out your dreams. Because people come to me, man, you from Atlanta. How'd you work, get the confidence to work the puffer? Then how'd you lead the confidence to lead that opportunity in? Da, da 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 And it's like, man, when I think about it, you know, it really becomes the little things. And it's actually the little things that end up holding us back. Because there's nobody on this earth that's not talented or creative 
Uh, and it's really about getting some of those other things handled. Uh, and so, you know, but now you, you think about it, you, and back to the whole capitalism thing, it's like, okay, I don't want to live in this neighborhood because it's a problem living in this neighborhood. So then you got the people who aren't afraid to tell this young man to pull his pants up. And I know some people, you don't want to tell them to pull their pants up because they're going to pull the pistol out. But there are, there are those mothers and those fathers that aren't afraid to say that, but a lot of them are moving out of the community because there are not enough services there, there are not enough amenities there, and so that's really what was a huge issue there because now it's not a village that's raising us, and that's where we started at. Thank you.